Designers. This is the Raw Studio, and this is the first video I've uploaded on YouTube in a while. And you might be wondering why. Well, I'll tell you why. I took a very long hiatus um, because there are some things going on in my personal life that I just want to focus on and prioritize that and my mental health and just getting my shit together. But I figured things are settling down now, so it'd be the perfect time to record a video or two or three or four or five. But anyway, just a little update. I moved out of my little dorm space, as you can see. I got a much better place now. Uh, I live in an apartment with four roommates, and they're pretty cool. Maybe they make a cameo sometime. I really want to give you guys a room tour because I put some of my art up on these walls and I put a bunch of posters up. But more on that later. Let's not get off track. This video is a tutorial on how to do some color separation by using a really cool method I found out. Um, it's using my uh, my reaction diffusion actions from my half tone diffusion pack, which is up on my site on DuronSupply.com. So go check that out and actually you kind of need it for this video so you should definitely check that out i'll also give you a discount code down in the description so check that out too but yeah enough of the chat let's get right into it before i start actually i just want to apologize for my voice because it's very raspy as i am sick as hell and if that bothers you i'm sorry i don't know what to tell you i took a bunch of advil i don't know i'm going to show you how to take a full color image like this wonderful picture of arnold i have here and turn it into a nicely color separated um, half toned image over here that has this really cool turning pattern effect going on. If I zoom in, you can see the very cool details. All right, let's get started. First things first, you're going to need um, my half toned fusion pack, which is up on my website on jeronsupply.com. Just go to shop assets and half toned diffusion pack. Um, and it comes with a bunch of actions that you could do to half tone your image. And it also comes with a bunch of bonus paper textures and it's a very cool action which is what we're using in this video today actually which is a uh or three actions actually to apply unique turn patterns to your image just like this um and we do that through diffusion dither bit mapping which I actually made a tutorial on as well so yeah you're definitely going to need this <laughs> um and i put a discount code in the description if you want it um so yeah once you have it downloaded and installed, let's go back to Photoshop. Let's go to our base image. Make sure you have your base image ready. Let's go to window and make sure this actions is checked so that we bring up the actions panel and find the distress halftone group. If you're unfamiliar with actions, basically uh, this little panel is just a list of all the actions you have. They're all put in folders and how you run the actions is you choose one of the actions from these folders and you click this little play button down here. So just to give you an example, I'm going to run uh, this distressed halftone action right here just by clicking play and I'm going to go ahead and click continue, continue, okay, and I'm going to choose the scale right here, let's go to 56 and then we end up with a beautiful halftone rendering of our image. So let's zoom in and get the details on this, very nice. We also choose the color here by uh, double clicking the layer thumbnail of the color layer and just messing around with the color. If you don't want any color, just go ahead and delete that. But I'm gonna show you how to make an actual fully color separated image like this um, using this action pack. So let's go back to our base image here. And what you're gonna wanna do is desaturate the image by going to image, adjustments, and desaturate. And I'm gonna put it in a group actually by pressing command G. And I'm gonna name this layer shadows. And then I'm gonna duplicate this three times by pressing Command J. And I'm gonna name this layer Midtones, the third layer Highlights, and the fourth layer Specular. You don't actually need to name them, but uh, <laughs> I figure it makes sense to, to organize these um, and keep track of what you're doing. What you're gonna do is hide these top three layers, go to your Shadows layer, and press Command L. This is going to bring up the levels panel um, and basically what you want to achieve here is get a nice low contrast, um, really kind of flat uh, image in terms of brightness and darkness values here. So you don't want the, the whites to be popping too much, you don't want the shadows to be too harsh, you just want a nice uh, flat low contrast image which this image kind of already has so I'm actually not going to play with this too much. Maybe just bring these uh, up a little bit, bring the grays left. I'm going to press OK, um, but of course those settings depend entirely on what image you have. Basically you want to end up with a very low contrast version of your image. So next let's go to the midtones, 
and do the same thing command out open the levels panel and for this one we're going to want a little bit more contrast so we're going to bring the black values in a little bit the white values in a little bit and the gray values to the right just to put some more contrast in there boom that looks good to me let's press ok and for the highlights layer we're going to do something similar but we're going to isolate the highlights so we really want to add some contrast in here so bring these black values in quite a bit um these white values in as well I'm going to push this back actually and then these gray values down to a good amount something extreme like this and i'm going to press ok and then i'm going to my specular and do pretty much the exact same thing but even more extreme so i'm going to bring these all the way in and bring the whites all the way in just like that boom so now what we're going to do is uh go through each of these layers and apply the reaction diffusion effect the reaction diffusion action to them um, and that's basically gonna half tone slash bitmap slash dither our image and give us that really nice effect but this time it's uh segregated into uh four layers which represent the shadows mid toads highlights and the specular highlights so let's go ahead and do that i'm gonna start with the shadows and go to um the third reaction diffusion right down here which by the way one, two, three are just different scales of the same effect. Three is the smallest scale, which I prefer, so I'm gonna use that, but you can experiment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click play. Let the action run its course. Um, and at the end, it's gonna come up with this dialog. I'm just gonna click stop, and it's gonna come up with a color layer here. Just go ahead and delete that. Um, and hide the shadows layer underneath. And do the same thing with the other three layers. If you want, you can hide these top two layers just so you can see what's going on. Um, but just for efficiency's sake, it doesn't really matter. And finally, the specular. Run the action again. Click OK. And delete the color and hide this layer. So now we have all of our shadows, midtones, highlights, and specular layers uh, pretty much bitmapped and half tone slash dithered, whatever you want to call it, um, and segregate it onto their own layer so we can choose their own color and color separate this image. So let's select all these bitmap diffuse layers and group them by pressing Command G. And they're gonna stay in order, which is what we want. The shadows all the way down here, the specular highlights all the way up here. I'm gonna name this uh, Reaction Diffusion. Doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm gonna hide these top three layers. And what you wanna do right now is go through all four of these layers and select all the black values and pick them out with the uh, the magic wand tool. So press W and also make sure anti-alias is unchecked. Um, the reason for that is because if we zoom in, you can see that this is actually pixel by pixel. There's no anti-aliasing going on. So we didn't need to have that checked. So go ahead and uncheck that and select the black and delete it out and do that for all four of these layers. Great, so once we have that done, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hide all these three layers. Just leave the shadows and double click the layer to bring up the layer styles. So double click here and let's put a color overlay on this. I'm gonna make this gray just cause I liked how it looked in the, uh, in the previous example. So I'm gonna choose a nice gray and then do that for all four of these layers. Choose whatever color you would like. So I'm gonna show this. Go to color overlay. I'm gonna make this one like a salmon color. Like that, that's nice. Press okay, press okay. Let's go to the highlights. Same thing, same deal. I'm gonna make this one yellow. Just like that. And I'm gonna make the specular highlights. You can keep them white. Uh, usually you wanna keep them pretty white. Uh, I just like to make it sort of off-white to flatten out the whole image, but generally white is the only color that's gonna look uh, good on these specular highlights. So press OK, press OK, and boom, look at that. We have this nicely color separated image. If we zoom in, we can see the really cool patterns that were created, but there's one thing that I would be cautious of, and that's if you're setting this to print, let's say you're printing on a shirt or whatever, um, obviously it depends on the size of the graphic and whatnot, but some of these details may be too fine to come out nicely on print. Like these very small dots that are on the shadows layer 
Um, so what I like to do is I'll go down to the shadows layer and I'll group it by pressing Command G. And I'm gonna drag this layer style effects from the layer to the group. Then once we've done that, I'm gonna open up the layer styles of the layer, not the group, and add a stroke to it. So you can play around with this. The color of the stroke doesn't matter, just make sure the opacity is at 100% and the position is either outside or center. I'm gonna choose center just because it gives me more control. I'm gonna pick three, um, press okay. And now if we zoom out, we can see that these uh, smaller areas that were in the shadows are much more blown out and pronounced now. Um, and I think it looks better like that. And if you want to add some extra depth into the image, something I like to do sometimes is go to the midtones, uh, head to the layer styles, and add a drop shadow, and make sure the the uh, settings are as is. The opacity is 100, blend mode normal. Distance is what we're gonna play with, but make sure the spread is on 100 and the size is zero. Um, so the color you could choose, oops, I did not mean to do that. The color you could choose whatever you want. It's just gonna give more depth and color variation to the image. I believe last time in the example I did red, and it kind of just gave a nice uh, pink color variation. I think it makes it look really nice. And for the record, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, but um, make sure that the document you're working in is in 300 dpi. So if you go to image image size, make sure the resolution is 300. Otherwise, this effect isn't really gonna work well. But yeah, that's basically it. We finished with this uh, pretty interesting half toning diffusion to the color separation effect. And if you send this to a screen printer, they're gonna love you. Um, so you're welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.